Hello, YouTube. Uh, quarantine haircut. Um, we were going for, you know, Soviet military circa the mid 70s. I think we actually pulled it off pretty well. Um, <clears throat> so we're here with number three in uh, our series on Jamaican white rums. We've done Ray and Nephew, we've done Handon. And thank God we are back to decent packaging. This is very yellow and green, very Jamaican, as you can see. Um, rum Bar by Worthy Park, uh, white overproof rum um, at 63% alcohol by volume. Um, rum Bar isn't a great name, but you know, it's at least there isn't like firebending going on on the cover this time. <clears throat> um, so I think uh, I, I want to start by saying, I think uh, most of the time when you uh, look on the internet for comparisons between these three rums. Um, it's characterized something as like Ray and Nephew is the, is the normal one, and then Hendon is the crazy insane one, and then this is something in between. And I don't think that's quite getting what this thing is. Um, if I can put this in musical terms, um, Ray and Nephew is like Led Zeppelin, right? It's the classic. Doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's the classic. Right, Hamden is is more like um, you know, uh, Parliament Funkadelic did a tour with Motorhead, um, and uh, you know they decided they, to play their sets together at the same time. Um, so you're you're hearing you know, uh, Overkill laid on top of uh, tear the roof off the off the sucker. Um, uh, this this isn't like a midpoint between this is this isn't any less weird than the Hamden. It's just kind of its own kind of weird. Um, so think uh, think art rock here. Think this the kind of stuff your roommate would put on mix CDs for you. This is this is um, you know this is Boris. This is Sonic Youth, if I can put it that way. Um, all right. So I'm going to drink a little bit of it neat. Do not drink this neat. But I'm going to give it a little sip. Um, and a little nose, uh, just to give you some idea, and then add some water and tell you more about Worthy Park. Okay, um, so the first thing you should know about Worthy Park is that it has a top note, which is very distinctive. I get it on, um, all the Worthy Parks I've had so far, and just to confirm that, what I have got here is a bottle of Hamilton Jamaican Pot Still Gold Rum. So this is uh, this is also Worthy Park. It's not so secret. Um, bottled at uh, just above 90, uh, 92 proof. Um, there's a little bit of, of food coloring added into this. Um, if you don't know Ed Hamilton, he's a little bit of a hero in the rum community. And um, I'm just going to give this a quick quick nose. Yeah, same top note. Um, it's a little bit. A little bit of a, of a kind of newspapery thing, um, hampering this a little bit. Uh, still really good. Um, yeah, lovely. Um, uh, outclassed a little bit by this is like ninety four points. Pretty good. Um, but let's put it aside. So uh, the top note for this is it's, it's taken me a long time to kind of unravel this. I'm going to call it like tomato paste uh, covered, um, covering Turkish delights. So, you know, that kind of candy with maize from, made from rose water. Maybe some other flowers in there too. It's, it's very floral. And maybe like a, a touch of like steak that's a little bit too overripe. You don't know if you should like still throw it on the grill or not. It's It's that kind of thing. It's... The tomato paste part isn't isn't overwhelming. Um, like uh, if you've tried some some aguardiente style rums from Mexico, you get it much more strongly, like like the wild fermented stuff. Um, and beyond that, sort of more classic uh, rummy notes. Um, white pepper. It's a little it's a little briny. Um, olives, a little a little bit of fresh rubber. I'm, I'm just gonna take a little taste. Oh. 
and there it is in the palette. Um, a little bit quite sweet, actually, compared to um, how the hand came across. Um, peppery, um, kind of fruity, funky. Uh, not not as much as the Hamden, but uh, almost. Uh, the first th thought that comes to mind is a grapefruit, grapefruit and um, kind of green bananas, like unripe bananas thrown in there. Um, olives again, more rubber, um, brine brininess. Also, hang on. It's almost like a like a bu bubble gum thing going on at the end. Um, like if you remember, uh, uh, not not just bazooka. Do you remember Double Bubble? The, the the little things in the packages. There's a little bit on on the finish in that. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. Um, no, I'm not going to dump it in. I'm going to give it you know some proper work with the um, the eyedropper. Three. Four, six, seven, eight. eight should be good. Let's give it. Close enough. Okay. Um, Worthy Park is an uh, interesting distillery, and then it's kind of both very old and very young at the same time. Um, the uh, I think they first started distilling stuff uh, in that region back in like the 1740s or something. But the original distillery was was basically shut down um, back in the, in the 1960s. Um, what's there now is an entirely new uh, facility. Um, I think they finished it only back in 2005 or something. So this is this is a place going back to like the Bush administration. That's you know, so it's young. Um, um, uh, over the last couple of years, Worthy Park, along, along with Hamden, has gotten really hot uh, with with spirits fans, spirits nerds, um, and um, a lot of that to, to me is is, I mean, it's, it's absolutely deserved. I mean, this is fantastic stuff. Um, it's as much a, a value as anything else you can buy for this price. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the the question that remains unanswered to me is 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 just well, how much of that is is you know just because Worthy Park is so good, and how much of it is just due to the fact that it's kind of around? Um, like it's this is this is one of the the Jamaican rums you can get in presented in good form from independent bottlers and now from the, uh, the distillers themselves. Try getting you know a bottle of of New Yarmouth or something um, that's been sort of well well taken care of. It, um, even Long Pond or um, Clarendon or some uh, is, is hard to get a hold of, at least in the U.S. Um, but there's plenty of, of Worthy Park and Hamden to go around. So part of me is wondering, you know, in the next couple of years, are we start, you know, once we can start to hopefully get, you know, more stuff coming out from the sort of distilleries, maybe they'll sort of wake up and, um, you know, um, get, you know hear, the, hear the good word and start putting out properly presented versions of their product. Um, if, you know, estimations of, of Worthy Park and Hamden will start to tone down as we realize maybe just to make Jamaican rum in general is really good. Um, okay. Doesn't develop as much <clears throat> on the nose as, as, uh, as the Hamden or even, even the, even the, uh, the Ray and Nephew, I think actually kind of kicks open a little bit more than, than this does. Um, the top note still dominates, still, you know, that sort of floral, rose water, um, tomato-y thing. Uh, actually, if, if, um, if any of you are like wine nerds, um, in, in South Africa, there's a wine grape called Pinotage, which often has a kind of rusty thing going on. I, I love this stuff, but um, it's not a huge favorite among um, connoisseurs. Um, there's a lot of that coming up, coming in here, like a kind of rusty penny thing. Um, yeah, black licorice, like old tires, old old tires and, and new tires. Um, like a kind of funky, earthy thing, which is kind of hard to put. 
Um, kind of hard to put my, my, my finger on. Um, on the taste? Mm-hmm. Actually, it gets even sweeter. Oh, that's lovely. Um, uh, pipe tobacco again. More like Virginia and Burley pipe tobacco this time. Um, uh, than, than sort of the Balkan Lataki of kinds of blends. Almost uh, okay, more brine. The fruit is up. There's some there's some guava in this. Um, and almost like a, a kirsch, kind of like a fruit spirit, like an eau de vie thing. Yeah, in terms of form, this is in many ways more reminds me of of, a, of an eau de vie or even like a um, uh, agricole style rum than it does the hand. It doesn't, I mean, it's way too like earthy and, and, and grimy and um, to be mistaken for one of those. Um, but it has, in terms of how it's delivering its, um, what it's got, it, it, it reminds me more of that than it does the Hamden or, or like a, like a, like a single malt scotch. Um, this is much more all the flavors sort of wrapped together into one big ball and which you kind of have to untwine. And then sort of just picking them out as in a, in a big, big mass, uh, uh, sort of, you know, strewn all over the place. Um, Beautiful. Um, yeah, this is uh, a little bit more expensive than the Hamden, but it does come in a liter bottle, which is nice. And again, the packaging is better. Um, I do, uh, as a sipping rum, I do like the Hamden a little bit more. It's just, it's just so, um, you know, complex. Um, but I'm still going to give this 87 um, out of 100. Uh, this is ter terrific value. Um, as a last note, uh, one th I, I'm, I'm guessing some people from like the bartending mixing community are, might be watching this, um, wondering, okay, of these three, Ray and Nephew, Hamden, um, Worthy Park, which is best in cocktails? Um, and so my first thought is to say, I don't know, because I don't really do cocktails. Um, <laughs> if other people can tell you better. Uh, the second thing I would say is, I mean, you may be asking that question a little bit upside down. What what I mean is, hmm. all three of these are, are such distinctive characters in their own way. You know, you know, classic rock. You know, funky um, speed metal something, and you know, art rock here. Um, that it it does it seems wrong to me to think that. You, you just need to pick one to fit into a set of kind of pre-picked cocktail that you've already decided on. I think these should really have their own cocktails built around them, um, if, if, I can, if I can put it that way. Um, Y'all mix, mixologists are, are creative folks. Like, these are three different, three very different canvases and, 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 and sort of starting points for your experimentation. I think they're all three worth, worth picking up and, and playing with. Um, my thought um, is this pro is probably going to go better with fruit juicy kind of things than, than maybe the Hampton does. But I mean, the Hampton might be able to work better in certain kinds of um, other classic cocktails, you know, something more you would normally more orient out towards a, towards a whiskey or even towards a, a, a cognac or something. Um, but I, I invite you to sort of experiment uh, by, by yourself. Um, that concludes um, my little series on on uh, white overproof Jamaican rums. Um, Hamden's still my favorite, but uh, they're, they're all just amazing value for money. And if you're if you're if you're spending your cash, um, you know, on something on Glenfiddich or something, you know, more power to you if you, if that's what you like. But I mean, in terms of character, like these just you know, these just you know destroy those things. Um, um, thank you very much for watching. And um, next time I might do uh, 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 some Scotch whiskey for you. Thanks a lot.